I want to start by thanking you for your service. You joined the Marines and, and led a rifle platoon in Vietnam where you earned a Bronze Star, Purple Heart, and other commendations. You served as an assistant United States attorney leading the homicide unit here in D.C., U.S. attorney for the District of Massachusetts and later Northern uh, District of California, assistant attorney general for DOJ's criminal division and the FBI director. So thank you. I appreciate that. But having reviewed your biography, it puzzles me why you handled your duties in this case the way you did. The report contradicts what you taught young attorneys at the Department of Justice, including to ensure that every defendant is treated fairly. Or as Justice Sutherland said in the Berger case, a prosecutor is not the representative of an ordinary party to a controversy, but of a sovereignty whose interest in a criminal prosecution is not that it shall win a case, but that justice shall be done and that the prosecutor may strike hard blows, but he is not at liberty to strike foul ones. By listing the 10 factual situations and not reaching a conclusion about the merits of the case, you unfairly shifted the burden of proof to the president, forcing him to prove his innocence while denying him a legal forum to do so. And I've never heard of a prosecutor declining a case and then holding a press conference to talk about the defendant. You noted eight times in your report that you had a legal duty under the regulations to either prosecute or decline charges. Despite this, you disregarded that duty. As a former prosecutor, I'm also troubled with your legal analysis. You discussed 10 separate factual patterns involving alleged obstruction, and then you failed to separately apply the elements of the applicable statutes. I looked at the uh, the, the 10 factual situations, and I read the case law. And I have to tell you, just looking at the Flynn matter, for example, um, the, the, the four statutes that you cited for a possible obstruction, 1503, 1505, 1512b3, and 1512c2, um, when I look at those concerning the Flynn matter, uh, 1503 is inapplicable because it wasn't a grand jury or trial jury impaneled, and Director Comey was not an officer of the court as defined by the statute. Six, section 1505 criminalizes acts that would obstruct or impede administrative proceedings as, as those before Congress or an administrative agency. Uh, the Department of Justice Criminal Resource Manual states that the FBI investigation is not a pending proceeding. 1512b3 talks about uh, intimidation, threats of force uh, to tamper with a witness. General Flynn at the time was not a witness, and, and certainly Director Comey was not a witness. And 1512C2 talks about uh, tampering with a record. Um, and as Joe Biden described the uh, statute as being debated on the Senate floor, uh, he called this a uh, statute criminalizing document shredding. And uh, there's nothing in, the, uh, in your report that alleges that the president uh, uh, destroyed any, any evidence. So what I have to ask you, and, and what I, I think people are, are working around in this hearing is, uh, let me lay a little foundation for it. The ethical re rules require that a prosecutor have a reasonable probability of, of conviction to bring a charge. Is that correct? Sounds generally accurate. Okay. And uh, the regulations uh, concerning your, your job as special counsel state that your job is to provide the attorney general with a confidential report explaining the prosecution or declination decisions reached by your office. You recommended declining prosecution of President Trump and anyone associated with his campaign because there was insufficient evidence to convict for a charge of conspiracy with Russian interference in the 2016 election. Is that fair? That's fair. Was there sufficient evidence to convict President Trump or anyone else with obstruction of justice? We did not make that calculation. How could you not have made the calculation because with the regulation? the OLC opinion, the OLC opinion, Office of Legal Counsel, indicates that we cannot indict a sitting president. So one of the tools that a prosecutor would use is not there. Okay, but, but let me just stop. You made the decision on the Russian interference. You, you, you couldn't have indicted the president on that, and you made the decision on that. But when it came to obstruction, you threw a bunch of stuff up against the wall to see what would stick. Well, and that I, is I, fundamentally I would unfair. To, I would not agree to that uh, characterization uh, at all. What we did is provide to the Attorney General in the form of a confidential memorandum our understanding of the case. Uh, those cases that were brought, those cases were declined. And uh, the, uh, that one case where uh, the President cannot be charged with a crime. Okay, but the, uh, could you charge the President with a crime after he left office? Yes. You believe that he committed, you could charge the President of the United States with obstruction of justice after he left office? 
Yes. Uh, ethically, under the ethical standards. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not certain because I haven't looked at the ethical standards, but the OLC opinion, opinion says that uh, the prosecutor, while he cannot bring a charge against the sitting president, nonetheless, he can t continue the investigation to see if there are any uh, other uh, persons who might be drawn into the conspiracy. Time of the gentleman is expired.